Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at a brand new mini PC hit in the market from GMK Tech known as the K9. And if you're into kind of tech at all, you know that AI has kind of been the rage for a lot of people when it comes to their new products. AI this, AI that. A lot of these companies are jumping on the bandwagon. And the K9 isn't any different because they opted to use the new Core Ultra CPU. And this is one that we actually haven't tested on the channel yet. We've taken a look at the Core Ultra 5 135H, Core Ultra 7 155H, and even up to the 195H. But with this, they have the new Intel Core Ultra 125H. So it is a lower end variant, but we still get 14 cores and 18 threads. And inside of the box, along with the new GMK Tech K9, what we're going to get here is a mounting system. So this can go behind your monitor, on the wall, under your desk. We also get a 6-foot HDMI cable and our 120-watt power supply, still utilizing that barrel jack, something I love seeing. Most of these guys are swapping over to USB Type-C, so I really do like that they've kept it with that barrel. Taking a look at the I.O. up front here, we got a 3.5 millimeter audio jack, two full size USB 3.2 ports, and this Type-C port up here is actually a Thunderbolt 4 port. It does support eGPUs and really fast 40 gig storage. Moving around back, two more full size USB 3.2 ports, full size display port, full size HDMI, and dual 2.5 gigabit Ethernet. I also wanted to give you a look at the internals and just how easy it is to upgrade that storage and RAM. Top pops right off with a few clips. We've also got a newer cooling system from GMK Tech. Basically, this will draw some air in to help cool off that RAM and NVMe drives. Just to get some airflow in there, and we will need to go ahead and unplug this before we get down any further. But once we get a look inside, you can see this does utilize dual channel SODEM RAM. We can do up to 96 gigs here, and we've got two PCIe 4.0 NVMe slots in here. This unit came to me from the factory with a one terabyte NVMe drive and 32 gigabytes of dual channel SODEM running at 5600 megahertz. But remember, you can pick this up bare bones and add your own storage and RAM later on. And of course, when it comes to the overall specs here, this is a chip I've been wanting to test. It is a lower end variant of the new Intel Core Ultra CPUs. It's the Ultra 5 125H. 14 cores, 18 threads. And with this, we get four performance cores up to 4.5 gigahertz. 8 efficiency cores up to 3.6, and 2 low power efficiency cores up to 2.5. Now don't forget, we've also got Intel's new AI Boost here. It's an NPU up to 1.4 GHz, built-in Intel ArcEye GPU, and with the 125H, it only has 7 XE cores. I was under the impression this had the same thing as the uh, Core Ultra 7 155H. One last core, but it does clock up near about the same to 2200 MHz. Supports up to 96 gigabytes of DDR5 at 5600, two NVMe SSD slots, Wi-Fi 6, Bluetooth 5.2, and this is running Windows 11 Pro, but again, you can pick this up bare bones from their website. So first things first, I wanted to jump right into the BIOS because with these Core Ultra chips, mini PCs, and even laptops, I've noticed there's usually a section known as Power Mode Select. Either balanced, performance, or even quiet, we definitely want to go to performance, power and performance, CPU, power management control. Looks like basically everything's unlocked here, but with these ultra chips, sometimes when you're making changes in the BIOS, it's just not going to help out. It's kind of a weird deal that I've seen with a lot of the laptops and everything powered by the Core Ultra series. Uh, power limit four. This is not going to go to 120 watts. I can tell you that right now. I think we're going to be at 45 to 65 even in... Um, performance mode, but just wanted to give you a look there. I do suggest going directly to performance with these PCs. We're going to save changes and exit, get right into Windows. As you can see, we've got those 14 cores with that Ultra 5 125H, 32 gigs of DDR5 at 5600, and we've got the Intel Arc graphics. This will allocate up to 16 gigs of RAM. Remember, from the BIOS, we did go to performance mode, and I wanted to see exactly what this thing's going to run at. We can stress out that CPU, and right here, looks like it's jumping up to around 61, 62 watts. Let's go ahead and put a load on that Arc GPU. See if it gives us any more. No. It's just going to take it away from the CPU, use it over here with the GPU. So basically, we're up to around 60 watts with this unit in performance mode. Now we could use a third party app to try to get this up, but we're going to test it just like it is. And I'll tell you, using this as an everyday desktop is really quick. I kind of expected it to be. We'll head over to GMK Tech's website real quick. 
Everything loads up really quickly. We've got Wi-Fi 6. Next thing I wanted to check out was a little bit of 4K video playback. Make sure we're at 4K. Stats for nerds. I suspect we'll see some really good 4K with this. This is 4K, 60 FPS, HDR, stats for nerds up in the top left hand corner, zero drop frames, and even though this will run it up to around 60 watts, we're not pulling 60 watts here. Checking out my kilowatt meter, we're at about 14.3 watts with 4K video playback, and I am in performance mode. Taking it down to quiet mode will still allow you to play 4K just fine, it'll go through all the way, but you won't pull as much power. And yeah, even the older, lower-end Intel chips for the mini PCs out there, like the 4105, has really been good for 4K video playback, so I suspect that the 125H would handle it just fine. I was under the impression that the 125H actually had the same iGPU as the 155H, but it looks like we get 7 XE cores instead of 8, so taking one off the top there, but they are running at similar clocks, this goes up to 2200. Next thing I wanted to take a look at were some benchmarks on the CPU and GPU side of things. With Cinebench R23, we're right there at 13,417, and again, we're up to around 60, 65 watts here. Moving over to Geekbench 6, single core, 2,222, multi, 10,962. And finally, I wanted to run at least one GPU benchmark, so I went with 3 Mark Time Spy. We run this quite a bit on Radeon iGPUs, and with mostly every Core Ultra CPU that I've tested so far with this new Arc i GPU, we've seen higher scores than over there on Radeon. But these are synthetic benchmarks, and the performance doesn't always transfer over to real-world gameplay. First game we have here is one that I love to test on iGPUs because it works so well across the board. Forza Horizon 5. Right now we're at 1080p, but we had to drop it down to low to see this kind of performance. No XESS, so we're not using any kind of resolution scale. We got a true 1080p. We're seeing an average of around 72 FPS, and at medium settings with no scaling, it does dip down to an average of 61. I also wanted to run the built-in benchmark for Red Dead 2. Dropped it down to 900p, low settings, and I am using FSR, set it balanced with this one. If we had access to XESS, I'd definitely be using it here, but FSR does work with Intel. Minimum of 14, maximum of 83, and an average of 60 FPS. OG Skyrim, just had to throw it in to see what we could do, and unfortunately at ultra settings with this, we did dip under 60. I was seeing an average of around 58. I was actually sure we'd be able to run this locked at 60 or even over 60 at ultra settings with this setup, given how old this game is. It's not the remastered version, but right now we're at high 1080p and we're seeing an average of around 74 FPS. And the final game I wanted to test here was Cyberpunk 2077. 900p low, XESS set to balanced, and if you've tried this on these new Intel Arc i GPUs, you know that it's a bit hit or miss. And right now, I think it's really missing. I mean, compared to something like the Radeon 780M, we're way under what that thing can do. I also wanted to take a look at total system power consumption, and this is everything being pulled from the wall with this mini PC. I've got this plugged into a kilowatt meter, and at idle, we're seeing around 10 watts. 4K video playback, 14. Average gaming does go up to around 51 watts. And in an extreme test, while maxing out all 14 cores and that new Arc i GPU, 81 watts in total. So overall, you know, when it comes to these new Core Ultra CPUs, they're great for everyday desktop usage. You want to get some email done, 4K video playback, all those little tasks that you're going to do. This thing performs absolutely fine. But then when you move over to gaming, these new Core Ultra CPUs with that new Arc i GPU really fall on their face. If you're familiar with the MSI Claw, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And given that we can run these at such high wattages compared to handhelds with these Core Ultra chips, Figured we'd be seeing a little better performance here and there, but unfortunately, it's just not transferring over. So to be totally honest, if you're looking to pick up a mini PC for gaming, I would definitely go with Ryzen, either that 7840U and up, or even the new 8840U and up. Speaking of that, GMK Tech recently released their K8 mini PC. I did a review on it a few weeks ago. It's powered by the AMD Ryzen 8845HS, and it really does kind of wipe the floor with this when it comes to gaming. 
Now, in everyday normal tasks, you're not going to notice a big difference between the two of them. You can get everything done on either one of those many PCs, but if you know you're going to be gaming on it, definitely go with Ryzen. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. I really appreciate you watching. If you're interested in learning a little more about the K9 or maybe even the Ryzen powered K8, I'll leave some links down below. And if there's anything else at all you want to see running on this PC with the Core Ultra 5 125H, let me know in the comments. But like always, thanks for watching.